All right, here we go. It is 1130. That is November 30th. We're at the end of the month. Got one month left in the year. So hopefully you guys cashed in on Black Friday. I know I did. Last year, I just completely let it slide by. This year was spectacular. I haven't talked to anybody else yet about like, like sales numbers and it, you know, I haven't, I haven't like poked my head out to see like retail Black Friday, if it was up, down, whatever, but I can tell you mine exceeded my expectations by a long shot. It was crazy. I did the three offers. I did the acquisition air, uh, the crypto club and, and actually back to the act program. And we took in, I think we're right about the 200 new customer mark in one week. That was just that I wouldn't have expected that. So that was pretty phenomenal, especially from a small list. But one thing that I, I really learned from the promotion from doing the acquisition air was that offer is really sexy just by itself. And when I did, I don't know if any of you guys were on the Black Friday webinar that I put on for it. That was all I did. I did basically a webinar, expected to be on there for an hour, and the webinar wound up two hours. And probably a good hour of it was Q&A. <clears throat> but it was not a fancy webinar. I didn't even have a PowerPoint presentation. I literally, like Friday morning, I woke up and I'm like, shit what the hell? <laughs> I got a bunch of people coming to a webinar. I haven't even done any prep work, nothing. And I thought, I don't need it. I literally just hopped on there. You guys, the ones that were on there, you saw me. I was just like this. I was just talking and uh, just talked about the product, talked about like how it came to be, what it's done for me, the, the change, like being able to get rid of the headache of SEO that whole thing to anybody that was in SEO was very sexy. <laughs> it really was because <laughs> anybody that's been in there, you know, you know what it's like to deal with that. All the reporting, the, the accountability, all of that stuff is just nothing but a pain in the ass. So it, it really did sell beyond my expectations, but the, the webinar itself was, again, the numbers were really surprising to me. Usually you don't have that many people show up to a live webinar. We had, I think at the max, we had like 130 people on the live webinar. And after two hours, we still had 100 people on. It was like, that blew my mind. That absolutely blew my mind. So it was crazy. I'm like, what are you guys all still doing here? You know, it's like, it's Friday, go to the weekend, <laughs> but the questions just kept rolling in. And uh, I actually, about an hour and, I don't know, hour and 20 minutes into it or something, I was just tired. <laughs> I was tired from answering all the questions. And, you know, it does, I got to tell you, it does take a little more, like, it's a little more taxing. This was what I found. It's a little more taxing on you to, to fly by the seat of your pants because you're having to think things, you know, out in the sides and ahead and all that. And, you know, did I miss anything and all that? But uh, so it, it did. It kind of wore me out, kind of kind of put a maybe I'm just getting old. Who knows? Jeez, <laughs> that's a scary thought. But anyway, I brought Brady in, you know, toward the end, I said, you know, let's do an actual live demo walk through the software. And I just tossed it to him and he just literally took it like a champ. So between my, the team I've put together for this, uh, Bree and Brady, we got, we took some licks over the last week. I'll tell you, because if you've never done a launch, it's one thing to sell stuff. You know, if you have a good sales process, you will sell stuff, but it's another thing to fulfill. Like you bring on 200 customers and you've got a whole different animal on your hands. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had to do that before, but when you bring on 
and you're trying to onboard, you know, more than probably 50, 50 is a, 50 is a challenge, but you know, we threw 200 down the pipe this week and Brady basically lost his voice. I don't know if any of you were on, on calls with him, but he just got roughed up. And, you know, he's young and energetic and all that. And he's like, go, go, go. And I'm like, yeah, you got no idea. I'm going to create a shit storm for you. <laughs> and he got to experience it. Uh, but the thing was, we were, we were at some point, we were scrambling because Brie was not yet up on the system. So she was like in training at the same time. So she was doing everything she could. Brady was getting the brunt of the punishment. So he, he literally was just taking a whooping. And uh, at some point I said, look, we need to automate this. I said, you know, I'm going to teach you guys about freedom here. And because when you're doing support and all that, a lot of it and, and the questions, like I guarantee you there wasn't one support question that was not answered on that webinar. Uh, they hit me with all of them. It was like an hour's worth of, of questions. So if you went back, all those questions were answered. But myself, Bree, Brady, and the support desk was all getting the same questions over and over and over. And I'm like, you know, we need some videos. We need some videos to walk people through the setup. Because, you know, Brady was having to walk everybody through the setup. It's, it you know, set up on a software like that. There are some things you want to avoid, you know, like like not putting in zero as your default to how many leads you want, which will give you an unlimited amount. That could be very costly. So we had one person that did that right out of the gate. They didn't wait for Brady. They went in, they set up an account, turned it on wide open, just like I did. And they got a nice bill the next morning. <laughs> They're like, holy shit. <laughs> so it it's just been it's been quite a week and also the uh i i told everybody i was going to let the let the program or or the promo run out through the week and orders have continuously come in like every day every time i pull up my email there's there's more orders in there and it's it's not just for acquisition air either a lot of people I have my list so well segmented and you know, this is, this is kind of a lesson for the good and the bad. Since I have my list so segmented, like all the people that came in from site pop, a lot of them don't even know about act and none of them really know that I run a crypto club. So those, they had no exposure to that. And when I sent the email out for the black Friday, I actually listed all three offers and I said, you know, most of you guys probably don't know, but I've been running this crypto club thing, put a little blurb about it and a whole bunch of people signed up for it. So it showed me that I had an interest group inside my segment that I had no idea about. So the, the lesson there is it never hurts to, to tickle out to see what people are interested in. And a lot of times, this is something I think you'll find in a lot of different businesses. When you grow an audience, you get customers, you, you know, some people call them raving fans, whatever. Generally, when somebody buys something from you, it's because they know, like, and trust you. So at that point, you can offer them just about anything. And because they know, like, and trust you, they'll buy whatever whatever you're doing. If they buy into you, they're buying into what you're doing. Like, like all those people, when I spoke at, uh, at Dory's event in Boston, all those people had bought into SEO. And, you know, I don't know about the whole group, but I know a good portion of them had bought into SEO because of me, you know, because back in 2010, I started training people on SEO and and that's what brought a lot of people into that, you know, through Ryan Dice's uh, promotion of me. He got a hold of me and wanted to promote me out to the world. And, you know, before that, no one knew about me. So they didn't know, like, or trust me because I was introduced and I had, 
I had Ryan and Perry basically put me on their shoulders and, and featuring me to their audience all of a sudden because of that connection. It's like, it's like the opposite of guilt by association. I was actually, it's the same thing. I was guilty of being a quality provider because of the association with them. So this is something that I leverage all the time. Like a lot of, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't really go out and do advertising and promotions and stuff outside of my little world. And when I find somebody that is a promoter or a potential promoter, I make the offer really good, like affiliate. I'm talking about affiliate marketing here. So what happens is now I have an affiliate that has a group of people, just like Perry and Ryan did. And what they're doing, they're putting me on their shoulders again. And they're introducing me. They're endorsing me. They're taking the no like, and trust that they've created. And they're just passing that on. It's guilt by association. So that's a really good way to get people indoctrinated into your world, into your community. Guilt by association, it works really, really well. Um, another thing um, that is the same thing, they call it the Oprah factor. In fact, the first time I heard that was from Perry. He told me, he says, we're going to do the Oprah factor on you. And I'm like, Oprah, what? You know, I'm like, I, I don't think I have any, any interest in going on the Oprah show. <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about, but he says, no, no, the Oprah factor. He said, anybody that goes on the Oprah show is instantly a millionaire because they went from being an unknown to a known commodity. And, and he said, that makes all the difference in the world. So the thing I'm trying to get across to you is you can work hard. You can work hard to create that on your own, or you can leverage someone else that's already done it. And you guys know how lazy I am. I am not going to work hard on my own for anything. <laughs> so just, just a lesson there. Roy, go ahead. You got your hand up there? Yeah, um, I had some questions for Brady, but he suggested it would be better to ask him here in the group. Okay. Yeah. So I'm really fired up about acquisition air and I wanted to really um, think about exactly how I want to use it. And um, so one of the questions I had was right now I've got a client that's actually doing pay-per-click ad pay advertising, but he's a dentist. Is that something that I could use acquisition air for? And if so, what kind, how would I simulate the environment? Cause he's getting somebody clicks on, this pay-per-click thing, they either call him immediately or they um, or they fill out a form immediately. Can we simulate something like that? Okay, sure. Now, somebody that is already doing advertising is a really good prospect. Oh, for great. So the fact that they're paying tells you they know the value of paying to get customers. That is huge. If you try and sell traffic products to a company that has never spent money on traffic or never spent money to advertise, that's like, they're going to cut their teeth on you. You're going to be a teething ring and it's <laughs> not going to be fun. Okay. So somebody that's already spending money to drive traffic and, and gain customers is a, to me is an ideal prospect. So what you need to look at it is their system. Like when they do the pay-per-click, what happens after? What page are they driving them to? What is the offer that they have? Is it Are they trying to just get them on a phone call or, you know, whatever it is, if it's working, then again, that checks the next box. Okay, I, I got this right. This is the right person to talk to. If they don't, because there, there are some people that will spend money on advertising just because they have more money than cents. Those people exist. Well, these for these people, it's working. And okay. what's happening is they're either calling them immediately or they're filling out a form immediately and getting an appointment. So yeah. I think I, I think the immediate thing is what is okay. important to get, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to look at the ad that they're running. Like, what are they saying to get the people to click? Okay. 
because you want to replicate that in your cold email. Okay. That's like you already know what's grabbing their attention. So you replicate that, you leverage that, and you move that into the cold email that you're going to send out when somebody is searching for, for something that ordinarily they would click and go and, and do that. We're going to just replicate that with an email. That's how we're going to get in front of them with acquisition air. So at that point, that email should be just really short and sweet, just like the pay-per-click campaign. You know, the pay-per-click, it's just a, it's basically like a one-liner to grab their saying. attention. Okay. You don't want a big lengthy email. You're not trying to, you know, get them to fall in love with you on that. You're just literally trying to get them to say, oh, here, click. I want more. So as soon as I got the leads, then shoot out the emails yes. and they would be in the list of dentists, for example. Yes. And yes. Any, any anything that came in for a dentist, yeah. they so, would get the same basic email. Yes. With these leads, it's really important with this type of lead that you act immediately. Yeah. You can't wait. You can't like say, well, yeah, I'm going to, I'll send this to them at the end of the day. If somebody's looking for a dentist, they've found one by the end of the day. And you're you're just you're late to the party. Right, right. You you literally have to hit them now. That's why we did the SendGrid integration. So we have something for you. Like if you don't have a system, we at least put one in there so you'd have one that's easily connected to it. So I can send grid it right into my funnel. Yeah. You well, and what then, you do and then an email would go right out. What you do is SendGrid is the email autoresponder. So basically you set up your email inside of SendGrid, you set it to go immediately, and then you connect that to, to our system. So when the lead's generated, it, it triggers SendGrid, out goes the email. Now the email, the click would go to your funnel. It wouldn't go back to SendGrid, it goes to your funnel. Right. So this is part of a, a, an out front mousetrap to bring them home for you. Ah, I love it. So that's, that's kind of the concept. That's what you want to do. You want to, you want to immediately follow up with them though. Cause like, you know, if, if somebody is looking for a dentist, they're, they're, you know, they're spending that time effectively. They're going to go in, they're going to look, they're going to find one, they're going to accomplish the goal. And then they're going to be off on their day. Right now, in some cases, like if they're if they're buying a Lexus, maybe they're trying to do a little research first. You might have a little more time, but somebody with a dental issue or somebody that's looking for, um, you know, like like water damage is a perfect example. You okay. got water damage. You need to deal with it like right now. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I'll deal with this next week. So, again. All marketing is associated with your avatar. It's like, if your avatar is in a hurry, you better be there like right now. If they're, if they're laid back, it gives you a little more freedom, but you should still be first to the first to the food bowl. You know, when they open up their email, you want to be like having read their mind. So, so you be right in front of them. Once they get the email, then, then where do I send it from there? I send it right to the dentist, the, the same way the ad was doing it. Well, the the email you're sending the email out to the to the potential prospect that ran right. the search. You're putting in there basically the same headline or whatever that's working in the pay per click campaign. Okay. So now they're that's triggering their action just like it does in the pay per click. Okay. Board. Okay. So they can either call or fill out the form right there. Exactly. So they click on the email. They go to your landing page. Just the, it's almost the same process of the pay per click. I got it. You're I just it. replicating it. You might send it to a different landing page, or maybe you send it to the same one. You know, it just depends on if you want to track it and keep 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 score. Great. Okay. That answers about three questions right there with that explanation. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. The other big one was what would be the benefits of going full airliner over corporate jet? Okay. So for me, for the, example, you know a little bit about my business. Yeah. Yeah. The corporate jet is made for people that just want to be like a, like a lead 
agency. Like they're, they they want to run an agency and they want to sell leads to clients. That's that's basically the one, the perfect one for the corporate jet, which is the middle model. Now, the ones that want to be like providers, like ones that want to provide SaaS software and not necessarily be in the business of, of working on the leads, but provide the service, that's the full airliner. That's where you basically do what I'm doing. You put your name on it, a software, and you sell it as your own. And then people use the software and they pay you for the use of the software. Awesome. And you also generate money off the leads. So it's just it's just one more step in the process of, of how connected you want to be. I see. If you want to run a business of lead generation and that's it, you don't really need the, the full airliner. You're, you're basically, I personally think it's a lot more work to run an agency generating leads. And, you know, because if you think about in business, you have a manufacturer, right? And then the manufacturer has a couple of distributors. So the manufacturer really only has to do with a couple of sales processes. He's just selling to the distributor. Then the distributor has reps. The reps go out and sell to all the retail chains. So the rep might have a hundred customers to deal with. Now, the customer that he sells to is the retail store. They've got thousands of customers that are going to buy the individual product. So you need to decide in the supply chain, where do you want to position yourself? I would rather be the manufacturer dealing with a couple of, of, of you know, distributors because you, when the less people that you have to deal with, the, the less complicated your life becomes. So if you want to work your ass off and, you know, just get work to the bone, just go ahead and open up a retail store. No, thank you. <laughs> You know, I've got people like my aunt, my aunt runs a, a wine and cheese store and she oh just, I mean, it's miserable. She works all day. Her whole yeah. family works with her. They, they just get ground to the bone and it starts over the next day at 6 a.m. Yeah. There's no freedom to that choice. Like when you open a retail store, you're making a major commitment to be there every day, whether people show up or not. Yeah. It's it, it's like, I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you roll back to the ACT program and I talk about opportunities and like the idea that opportunities are dropping on my feet every day. And, and generally I'll say no within the first three seconds because I'm looking at what is my involvement what 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 do I get out of it? And if it takes much involvement on my part, it's like, oh no, thank you. I am not looking for a job. It's just like, no thanks. I'm 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 out. <laughs> yeah. Like it it's almost like uh what's that TV show, the the sharks? It's like I'm out. <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. out way more than I'm in. <laughs> Because I'm evaluating, I, I understand business, I understand segmentation, I understand profitability, profitable segmented markets, what it takes to actually get the cash out, and what it's going to take to support the system. And that's what I'm looking at. In seconds, I can evaluate almost anything based on that. So that goes back to the corporate jet being a job you're going to be a lead agency you're going to have a bunch of people to deal with got it and and you're going to be dealing with them on the retail end of things and here's the first thing that's going to happen they're going to lean on you for the marketing it's not going to be just leads wow. they're going to want you to do everything for them and then everything lies in your hands as far as their success if they don't make a sale, guess who it's rolling back to? It's rolling back to you. Now, again, I say hell no to that. There's a lot of people that love that, and that's perfectly fine. I, you know, no disrespect to anybody. You know, 
they say there's a lid for every pot. People got to take that on. People have to do that position. That's just not for me. You know, um, I am, I have, I am being very clear that the way that I'm doing acquisition air is we are selling it as a software. We're not doing your lead. We're not doing your marketing for you. Right. And I've told everybody like, you know, first thing in, they're like, how do I sell this? How do I do that? That is not what you bought here. You bought a software to generate leads. If you want marketing marketing advice, I do that every week on Thursday in the ACT program. So that actually generated quite a few sales for this, you know, this weekly call is people that needed help with, you know, with their marketing. Yeah. Because as you guys know, a lot of you have been with me for some time now you know that leads are in the traffic bundle. Traffic is the last piece of the puzzle yes. when it comes to marketing. Right. Yeah. It's first figuring out the market, then figuring out the message, creating effective messaging for them. And then, and only then, do you bring the people to the messaging. You know, anything outside of that is just going to be expensive and frustrating. And it's probably not going to work. So, so marketing is everything, you know, and that's one thing, you know, when I'm marketing, when I'm marketing and, and in, even in the future, I am marketing acquisition era as a traffic generation product. It's not marketing. It's yeah. like, you don't go to pay-per-click. You don't buy a pay-per-click campaign and then say, well, it didn't work. Can you do my marketing for me? They're, <laughs> they're it's just not their thing. That's not what you paid them for. You paid them for the traffic, not for the marketing. If marketing doesn't work, that falls back on the marketer. And if you didn't follow the ACT program, you're probably going to start over. There's no way around it. There's no like, like, you know, click your heels and you're no longer in Kansas anymore. You got to do a little bit of work. You know, I, I can take you to the gym, but you got to do the push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> you got to figure out your market. You have to decide who is going to be the most profitable person for you to work with. Figure out, you know, who they are, what they want, why they want it, what's important to them, and then create the messaging around it. When you do that, it will be like music to their ears. They will fall in love with you. They will get to know, like, and trust you, and then they will buy your stuff. It's it it it's really that simple in concept. It's very hard to implement <laughs> as as you guys know. I can say how easy it is, and in concept it is. It's a very simple concept, but people really struggle with it. And you know, and that's just the way it is. <clears throat> and I think most people struggle with their own. I have not figured this out yet. But I can tell you it's absolutely 100% true. When, when it comes to me doing marketing for me, I've, I just feel like a complete buffoon. You come to me with your marketing, I can jump right in and, and make magic. But when it rolls back to me, and, and I got to tell you, like Acquisition Air was the first time I have actually effortlessly created a marketing campaign for myself and it was due to ai i gotta tell you it has nothing at all to do with me or my abilities it had to do with me leveraging a tool a technology to help me i really needed that help when it came to the marketing for me i needed that help as much as you guys need it believe it or not it's, it's something, I don't know what it is. I, you know, maybe Jay and, and all of his, his NLP wisdom can figure that one out or what that is, <laughs> but Jay Jay all being problem, too man. close to your product, John. Yeah. I, if you can figure, if you can figure that one out and make some kind of an NLP wizardry to get rid of it, you can probably make an absolute fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, NLP doesn't work that way, John. But I can tell you, your your copy is good enough. I literally stole a big chunk <laughs> off your website, 
And with only slightly modification, slight modifications, I was able to turn that into a quick a minimum viable video for a demo video, um, plugged it in and the sales team love it. This is what they've been yeah. waiting for is to, is to be able to have that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, if you would, you said that the corporate jet's sufficient for selling leads to other companies. I have a question because and staying on that topic, I got the full airliner so I can white label because I don't think I should be doing anything that's not white label. So if somebody sees yeah. it, it's got my logo on it. Yeah. But the software right now is not, it's in beta. <laughs> we'll stand behind that beta shield a lot because <laughs> it's not its not safe letting clients into that back end right now. There's too much that can go wrong. So while I'm, we're gonna have, we're gonna be offering this as a white glove service in, initially, but yeah. we're only selling to current active PPC advertisers and going yeah. directly at them is, would you like a, a lead for less than a click? And, yeah. and we will maybe eventually turn the software over to them, but I don't see how you can do anything other than white glove it right now, given the fact that the first thing a customer is gonna do is gonna go into the back end, set it up and leave the number at zero. Yes, yes. And that's what I see as being just a horrific, <laughs> a hor if you do that once, you've lost that client. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we are working on as far as the back end is I figured out how to do it basically yesterday. I was on the wrong, I was on the absolute wrong track because we have we have our our program in, in Kartra where we have the membership site for all the training and the support and and all, all the back end stuff. Obviously, you can't give that to your customers. So what we're doing, I was going to have uh, I was going to have the team actually put a link to that. And then I'm thinking, oh, well, no, that's not going to work for the white label. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the, the, the onboarding videos on a page inside the back end to where it'll say click here first to watch the onboarding videos and the videos will be generic. They'll walk people through step-by-step step how to set it up all the intricacies what to watch out for and and you just tell them you know you need to you have to watch this first and set it up according to these videos or you can make a big costly mistake <laughs> like setting zero to the <laughs> you know I may actually have the team put the default to five instead of zero. I think that would probably be a really good safeguard. So, so that's, that's probably or in the even very, one. <laughs> very, yeah. One, that one lead a day. <laughs> or so, maybe don't let where, zero be an option without consulting uh, admin, make it a, yeah. uh, a gated, uh, gated thing. Yeah. Well, that you, actually you might, it, if you, if you set it to one, then it's basically telling everybody you needs to be adjusted. Otherwise, you're not going to get in trouble. They're not going to get any leads. Why am I getting any leads? It's because of the safety factor. That's a much better sale than I left it alone. And all of a sudden I have $1,500, you know, like somebody else I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a real eye opener too. <laughs> And, and, you know, on my part, it was part from disbelief. I'm like, uh, there's no way this thing's going to generate more than a few because I'd been paying for them. I was paying $18 a click and I could only get, you know, maybe a couple a day at $18 a click. So I'm thinking, yeah, you know, how many could it give me? Well, it could give you a lot. <laughs> All right. Let me go to hey, Sue. Hey, John. Let me go to Sue question. here real quick. Sue's had her hand up the longest here. Sue, go ahead. Yeah, actually, I'm really excited about your both the programs, Acquisition Air and even Act. Yeah, I joined both. And uh, I just have a couple of questions. Means basically, I'm getting leads, but I have a, like a 50 keywords. And okay. uh, I want to set up the campaign for these leads. Uh, I want to respond them immediately. So I just wanted to know the what format the campaign I should set and how many emails will be there in the campaign. Uh, and actually I got the template uh, short and sweet and accordingly I created two emails. Those two okay. emails are uh, really looking good uh, and 
those can be used for any keyword uh, basically because they are uh, generic but i just want your input because these leads uh, i'm getting i want to set up a campaign for those leads so i just okay. want to know your input about what the leads we are getting from acquisition air sure. and what kind of campaign we can set and uh, uh, sure. whether the campaign should go to tripwire offer or core offer i just want your input on that sure absolutely so Here's something you want to be careful of. You want to be careful about generic anything when you're doing marketing. So I know you said your emails are, are generic. Um, because uh, 50 keywords. So no. Uh, yeah. So what initially you, what, I was not getting any leads. So then I set up lots of keywords. So now I'm getting leads. Yeah. So, so you would be better off, I believe, to create multiple campaigns if the keywords are if the keywords are all exactly on topic and it's all very specific to something even though they're different keywords you could have hundreds of different keywords that were all specific to like like if you were solving acne for instance there's you know a thousand different keywords you could do for acne and if those were all going to you know a generic acne thing that would probably work okay but just be careful when you say generic if you've got like you know acne or or skin rashes or you know things like that because when somebody is going to respond they respond to specifics if they have a skin rash and it says acne they're like nope that's not me so just be careful with the generic you can have as many campaigns as you want like you could create one for for skin irritation, you could create one for allergy, you know, allergy itchiness, you could create one for acne. And, you know, I don't know that you're into skincare, but if there, if you were, that would be some examples of different. How campaigns. many emails in a campaign? How many emails in a campaign and where they should lead? Yeah, what so, is the flow of the campaign? So How many emails cam and what is the flow? Each campaign should go to a specific email that's specifically related to that. Now, the number of emails, the more emails you follow up with, the better. Like you might want to send one out immediately. You might want to send one out a few hours later. You might want to send one the next day, the day after that, then a couple days later. I would probably, you know, well, I wouldn't because I'm too lazy, but you should set up, you know, at least seven, I would think, seven to 14 follow-up emails. That would be ideal. Each one of the emails should be very short, very sweet. Just it's a, it's an attention grabber to get them to take an action to click and go to your site. Now, as far as marketing goes, like the flow is going to be different for everyone there. I can't give you a recipe for the ideal marketing situation for across the board, because this is developed out of your research. Your research, your analysis on your on your segment, on your avatar, it all relates down to that person, what they want, why they want it, all of that. What I would recommend, though, just generically, is an, an education-based marketing program. You want to create an education-based system. So the first thing is to get them to acknowledge they have a problem, right? So like, let's say somebody is coming in, let's say they're coming in for a mortgage. They're looking for a mortgage and we're going to hit them. The first email is don't sign a mortgage doc or don't sign up with a mortgage broker until you read this. That's automatically going to pump the brakes for them. They're going to, oh, whoa, wait a minute. This is a warning. I should pay attention. This is a big thing. A mortgage is a big decision. Who you go with is, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to get screwed? I'm making a 30-year commitment here. This is a big deal. So I would first try and educate them. Hey, don't sign that unless you know this. You have to know this. This is very important. This could save you a ton of money. And this could keep you out of a lot of trouble. You know, whatever. The short be. video or PDF in this case means... Uh, so this resource I'll send immediately don't sign up for this. So is it a short video or PDF? What do you recommend? These should be very short. These should be very short. What okay. you want to do is you want to give them, like when you offer them something, don't, don't, 
do this without knowing this. Then you give them the thing, you make it very useful, but incomplete. So it gets their attention, it hooks them and they want more. You always want to leave them wanting more. If you do a 10 minute video and you answer all their questions, you did not leave them wanting more. Give them one thing, one actionable thing right out of the gate and leave them wanting more and tell them how to get it. Say, hey, I have another video. If you really, you know, if, if this helped you, click here to watch my next video where I'll give you the next piece, whatever that might be. Figure out, like we talk about in the ACT program, we talk about a timeline. The timeline starts with where they are in their current position in life. The, the end of the timeline is their desired outcome. So all the steps in the timeline could be a little piece that you could give them along the way to educate them, to help them move along the timeline to get what they want. The more you advance them down the timeline, the more they're going to trust you, the more their desire to buy from you is going to go through the roof. So that is anything. I don't care what you're selling. If you're not doing that, you're not going to get the conversions that you're looking for. And then your advertising, your leads are going to be expensive. You're going to have to buy a lot of them to get one to go. So marketing is the key to success in, this, in any business. So be careful. If you don't have that marketing system set up, you're not ready to buy leads yet. You know, I'm in the business now of selling leads. So I want you to buy leads, but I, I want you to be ready. I don't want anyone to buy leads if they're not ready because they're just going to waste the money, just like anything else. So that, that's very important. So let me go I'm to Lauren. I'm going through your there. ACT program and it looks amazing. Well, thank thank you. you. I'm going through your program. It's really, really amazing. Awesome. I'm, I'm actually, uh, some of your videos I'm watching like three or four times. It's yeah. really amazing content. And, uh, you know, I have gone through many uh, systems and uh, programs. Yours is not the first one. I think uh, it's really value I'm getting from your program. So I totally appreciate. Thank you. Awesome. Well, hopefully it'll be your last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even I hope so. <laughs> All right, Lauren, go ahead. Hey, so... um. I got the uh I got the corporate jet. That's the one I got. Uh, okay. because the way I the way I kind of frame it, especially with the um not a, not only the search leads, but the uh the site leads instead mm -hmm. of because I do write sales emails and called emails. So uh the way I've been framing it, because I used to do it for another company, was I renting out the email. So if they're getting yeah. traffic from like a, a Shopify store and the ability to capture uh, those leads, they need an email campaign to actually get those people back to attempt to get the sale in the first place. Because the issue yeah. is your abandoned cart doesn't work because these people are not in your system. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, the that's a perfect solution for you because you don't really want them in your system. You're selling them a whole, you're, you're selling them a whole enchilada. Yeah. And, and you know how to do that. And that's your thing. So that, that's a perfect solution for you. But, uh, you know, for somebody that didn't have your skill set and didn't want to be involved in, you know, in the marketing part, then the white label is is the way to go. But, you know, if you're if you are running an agency, that's what that one's made for. It's made for people like you that are actually running an agency. You've got clients. You just need leads to sell them. So it's perfect. Yeah, because it's twofold, because usually on a on a copywriting side, copywriters, for the most part, will sell their copy and their copy can make whoever how many much money unless mm -hmm. you have a royalty agreement, which lasts only as long as they get another copyright to beat your control, right? And that's, yeah. well, no, in this situation is, well, I'll collect the leads that are coming in from your, let, let's say the site one, um, the site anyway, I'll figure out the copy, but you never get my copy. Yeah. You're renting my copy every month because <laughs> once I dial it in and I know, I can get those people back and let's say it's a furniture company. I can get them to spend a few thousand with you because they go back to the site. You know, you never get that copy to send and you can't, you don't want to build out that cold email system for yourself. Cause without me, you have to build all of that out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That's like in, in SEO, that's like the rank and rent scenario. 
yeah, it's like the regular. Um, yeah, it's kind of like that. My my other my question was um, because I know we could the native connection or integration is currently with um, uh, what you call it, SendGrid. SendGrid, right? yeah. Right. That's the only connection we could do right now. That's the only one that, that's the only one that we have integrated. You can connect okay. it to anything. Like you could take the Google Sheet and you could use mm -hmm. uh, Zapier or Zapier, whatever you would call it, and you can connect it to any backend system. The next one that we'll be rolling out, we're actually, as much as I cringe every time I say the name, uh, it's the Go High Level. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be the next integration that we actually have is for go high level. So yeah, and I think we're a few, probably a few weeks out on it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cause my, cause even with the connection to Google, I have no problem doing that. It's just like for some contacts, there are two emails. So making sure that all the emails to whoever are actually in the system in a way that it can send out instead of just one column, what these emails uh, yeah. listed that's that's what i'm trying to figure on that end yeah yeah because we have a, a primary email and then if they have a secondary email that they've put in uh, it grabs that as well so some of the leads right. you have it some don't you could potentially um, set up an automation to where if it had a second email you just create that as a new lead in your autoresponder and that way that customer is getting one email to each email. Yeah, because that's the that's the uh, only tech part that I'm trying to figure out of um, how to do that without me having to redo the sheet where all the emails are just listed straight down and then let it go from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one, unfortunately, I couldn't help you with that. That's that's more on the programming into things. But uh, but you could do that. You know, any of the ones that had that secondary email, you could set it up as two prospects and and just treat it that way. Mm, yeah, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll figure it out one way or another. I don't know if there was like <laughs> I, anyone who <laughs> I know you out. will. <laughs> you're you're the one of our group that would figure that one out. <laughs> no, I'm figuring it out. I was like, let me ask first. <laughs> to see if it can save me a couple of hours. Oh, but no, sure. Figure it out. Don't worry. All right. Rashid, go ahead. Okay, the first question is how soon do we get access to those onboarding videos for ourselves so we can oh, gotcha. use them? Um, I don't have an actual answer for that. I just actually put that to the tech team this morning. Like I said, I was I was having them, you know, put the link over, and then I thought, oh no, I need to pump the brakes on that. That's not the right thing to do. So we are like Brady's on the on the call now. He's he I I actually tasked him with creating the videos because I know you guys didn't want me on there specifically, and you know I don't think anybody outside the you know the internet marketing space is going to recognize him yet, unless we turn him into a superstar, and then we <laughs> we might have another an, another one of me. That that's the goal to shadow him up and bring him up in my in my shadows there. I don't know if he's ready for that yet. I, I don't even know if he's got his voice back yet. Bring it on. <laughs> voice is back, I guess, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you were on in the beginning of the call, but I told everybody how roughed up you got onboarding uh, hundreds of customers. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a wild ride, but we're uh, we're on top, so we're good. My voice is now actually you can hear me versus having to whisper. See, before I had only told him the stories of the old bull method. Now he's seen it live in action. <laughs> Starting to adapt. I like it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's definitely a different way of thinking and a different way of approaching things. But uh, I did put that out to the support team this morning that I think what we want to do is put a an onboarding videos tab into the control panel and then have a specific page with all of the videos and uh, and I you know Brady did those videos perfectly they're they're awesome it's not like you know I can say oh you know I could have done that better because I couldn't have you know he he know he actually knows the system better than I do at this point I've been doing you know the high level work on eh, it needs to be this it needs to do that you know and you know given the direction for 
for the creation, but he's really had the hands on inside the system and knows it better than anyone. So, so anyway, when we create those generic support videos, I'm pretty sure we'll be having him do those and then we'll load those up. And then when you onboard your clients, those will be right there for you. And at that point, I honestly think if somebody goes through those onboarding videos and actually does what they say, I don't think they would need support beyond that. I mean, you are going to get just the questions because there is a lot of people that, you know, I don't, I don't know. They, they just need reassurances. Like, like you can tell them to, you know, poke one, two, three on the keyboard, but then they're going to ask you, was it really one, two, three? And, and, you know, I, you're going to be like Mr. McLean there. You'll have no hair left. And Brady, those two have had those questions. I can see. <laughs> but it's like, you know, and I, and I have said this a few times now in the last recent calls, confidence is what's going to sell. Like if you know how something works and you do it, you don't need reassurances. That's just like take the training wheels off. Pretend as though you are the expert. Get that, get that in your head that you know how to do stuff. You don't need to be reassured that you're doing the right thing because it's like a dog. If a dog knows that you're scared of them, they can sense it. Well, if you're not confident, your customers can sense it just like a dog and they're not going to want to work with you. If, think about it. If you're talking to two people and you're trying to make a decision of who goes, which one to go with, and you've got somebody that's not sure of themselves, and they're like second guessing and they're not just, they don't have the answers. They're not like on track. And you got another guy that says something with confidence and stands behind it. Doesn't, doesn't keep talking, just says, Hey, you click one, two, three, and that's it. And leaves the loan, <laughs> you know, or, okay. or you got the guy that says, well, you, you, you click, uh, one, two, and 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 then you click three. You know, and, and 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 then let me check the documentations to make sure I'm right with that. Now, who are you going to go with? There's no way in hell you're going with that second guy. No way in hell you're opening your wallet and giving that guy your money. You need to be solid. You need to be rock solid when you're talking to people. And I don't care if you don't know your ass from a hole in the ground. They don't know that. <laughs> you need to, you need to at least pretend you need to become a good pretender. You know, they say fake it till you make it. The more you do, the more confidence you'll get, the better you'll get at anything. And all of a sudden you'll just be the master. But if you don't do that, you're never going to get to master status because no one's ever going to know, like, and trust you enough to pay you. Then you're just, you're just going to give up. You're going to get to a mediocre status that you're not happy with, and you're going to give up. You're going to throw in the towel. Confidence is everything. When you are trying to sell, you need to sell from confidence. You know, I talk about selling from your heels. That's not confidence. If you're selling from your heels and you're not sure about something, you need to sell from your toes. You need to lean forward. You need to be the expert. You need to be sure of yourself or they're not going to be sure of you. So, Well, I'm pretty confident this is, this is what I have been looking for and I've been um, wanting. What's the fail-proof one, two, three punch uh, description that I can use to explain to somebody what the hell, what exactly this is. <laughs> well, it's like Richard said, the sales copy that I put together along with the video, like the video that I did, the Black Friday video, 
it was completely by the seat of my pants when I did that. But the, the way I described it, I think almost everybody got it. There wasn't too many people. The only thing I get is I, this is what I've been getting lately. Hey, how does that work? You know, they're asking me all these questions. Like they want to see end of the hood. And the answer for that is we're selling the chicken, not the Kentucky fried chicken recipe. Where you know you don't need to tell them how well, something works. That's well, your proprietary system. Exactly. You don't you don't go into if, Colonel Sanders and say, "Hey, can you give me the recipe? I'd like to make this at home." <laughs> the yeah, for a few few million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, the chicken's a couple. You know, twenty bucks a bucket. You want the recipe? That's two billion dollars. <laughs> Okay, so, so steal, steal your copy and copy your uh, video presentation and do it in my own words. Yeah, and, and again, you need to adjust this to your market. Right. Like, like the market that I'm selling to, they got it, they get it, it was right on the money. Uh, but, it, you know, if you're selling to a different market, you know, maybe adjust it to something they're used to or, you know, just... Well, again, back to the ACT program. Who are you selling uh, to? What's their language? You know, if they speak a particular language, speak that language to them. Our plan is a marketing agency. Um, yeah, the marketing companies, my marketing agencies. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do the do the selling part of it. We just want to, like you said, two distributors oh. and, and let them sell them the leads. Yep. <laughs> To me, that's okay. the that's the the only way to go. But uh, all right, Mister McLean. Hey there. Good morning, John. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I, uh, I I started watching the videos and that was very helpful, <clears throat> but I got distracted because I started researching motorhomes that I'm going to buy. Oh shit! With all this money, <laughs> has anyone has anyone raised seriously? Raise your hand if you've already like started been on YouTube or doing reviews of how you're going to spend your money the vacation home you know <laughs> yeah All hey, right. been, hey chris i i got a picture of an airplane sitting right in front of me yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. it's a private jet <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> oh, i have a picture God. of nothing because when i get all that money i'm going to do nothing <laughs> oh, i like that yeah well you that's can watch us freedom. all do our thing <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, -huh. uh and Gregory says he's gonna expand his trading. It's funny. Yeah, that we can see that carrot. That carrot is so juicy on the end of that stick. So anyway. So, so in your in your search for motorhomes or yeah. have you have you gotten up to the pusher level? Have has that keyword crossed your desk yet? No, what's the in motorhomes? That's a that's a thing. Okay, you add pusher to your list and you'll you see pusher. You you will move from the private plane up to the full airliner. <laughs> oh man, that's good. I'm gonna have to sell a lot of leads to get to that level. Well, Pusher anyway. is the motorhome with the V with the engine in the back. It's like oh. a bus. <laughs> oh, oh, right on. Okay, all right. How many crew members do you think I need to run that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, so I got, I got, I got plans already. I just have to get there. Um, I, I would just ask you to clarify if you could, and I know, I know you describe this i'm still uh not clear where i should be with the corporate jet or the or the full airline i went with full airline because my thinking was if i get in there i want to white label things so that the people i'm offering the leads to won't see your logo and say yes. well let me check this out and go around me exactly you're you're on the right track there that's the perfect selection for that okay because the the corporate jet is if you're doing all the work and they're not really even in the system, you're just providing a service to them and they're paying you for the service. That's the corporate jet. That would be the corporate jet. But if you're if you're doing it and you're allowing them in the system and you want them to create an account and you want them to to be able to run their own campaigns and things, then you're you want the full airliner. You want that to be you want it to look like your software. Okay. And so in that case, the uh, just to match them, the, the target I'm going for to sell leads to are 
entities that already have a marketing department in place with analytics that they yeah. can see their own thing. So I won't be, you know, I might help with some initial, no, actually, I guess I wouldn't. If they had their own marketing thing, they already have their marketing campaigns. They know the wording. They just want the leads. That yeah. would be the way to go. Yeah, Whereas that's, if I go the to white, that's the white label for sure. That's the white label for sure. Whereas yeah, the because they're jet they're logging into the system, they're setting up their own campaigns. You're just kind of hands off. You are you're okay. just providing them the platform to generate their own leads. Okay, that's, that's the full airliner. You are the airline. Well, you should change the name to the pusher uh, <laughs> airline. I'll, 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 like like the jet with the engine in the back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was that, and I had one other. Darn it! I had one other question. I plum forgot. Um, oh, do you have any? Do you or Brady have any strategies? Oh, oh, sorry. One technical thing to clear up. I understand that the as the software sits, the pricing uh, preset is the same for everyone. However, if you go in to a a campaign within the software, you can then adjust the price per well, campaign. You, you as the full airliner, you set the price, you set the default price in the system. But, but if, you have the ability to adjust it on a campaign level. So, or, or okay. even a client level. That's what I'm, and that's available now or in the future? That's in there right uh, now. The, okay. on the client level, is not available currently it's in development oh, okay. Okay. yes so the two options are a default price per all of your clients or per campaign per campaign okay, okay. Yeah. so if i had a client i could um and they were setting up their own campaign you know or uh, we, i set up a campaign for them work work to them to set up a campaign um i could set the price for that campaign and every other campaign that's set up i could set that same price for for that client in their campaigns whereas a different client i would be setting the price uh differently for their campaign yes and the the way i would position that is i would say i would say i would set a default price like whatever the lowest price you want for your leads i would the overall set, yeah overall i would set that as a default price Okay. And then I would say I would to your clients, I would say this is our baseline lead price based on what lead or what niche you're generating your leads with, your price might vary. Okay. And that way if you get somebody that comes in for solar leads that are worth a lot more, you can set their price for that campaign accordingly. Okay. Um here that opens up two other questions. If I <clears throat> well, let me start with the first one. What would you suggest that, how would you suggest I research what people are currently paying for pay-per-click leads? Let's take a doctor, for example, you know, and again, you mentioned like, a, you know, or like a lawyer, let's say a lawyer with a, a car accident. Yeah. So pay-per-click is really easy. Okay. You can actually just log into Google's pay-per-click system. You okay. can use their system to do the keyword research and it will show you the pay-per-click costs on every keyword right there. Okay, super. So that's, that's how I can. Way. Okay. Now, now let me just, let me just say something that, you know, it's not just for you, but it's for a lot of people rather than, because what you're talking about is like setting different prices on each campaign. Mm -hmm. That's going to complicate the shit out of your life. And you're also going to have to go out and try and figure out what all these leads are worth, where instead of doing all that work, you could just say, I am a wholesaler. I'm wholesaling the leads out. Let them figure all that shit out. Allow them. The more you allow someone to feel like they're taking advantage of you, the more they will. And the more that makes you money. So like, if you were to if you were to say, okay, you know, these are wholesale leads, mark it up a minimal amount. Like let's say you're buying them at $1.99. Let's say you 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 sell the leads at $250 or $3 even, $299. You're making a dollar per lead. And if they sell, you know, 
10,000 leads a month. Do you really care how much they're making on each one when you're making 10 grand on that one customer? And let okay. them do all that work. Let them complicate the shit out of their life. Because I know you don't want a complicated life. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. I, I just know it. <laughs> all right. Boy, they go. So it, I, I, yeah. It's just different ways of <clears throat> thinking and looking at stuff. If okay. you want a really complicated business, you can just forget the idea of cruising around in a motorhome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not a freedom lifestyle. You okay. want to set up, you know, as few complications, as few interactions, as and as much automation as possible. And, All right. and be the base of the system. You don't really care how much other people are making on the leads. Let them make that money. It just incentivizes them to do more. And that okay. makes you more. If I can push back just a little bit on that, if I did go to Google and I found that someone's paying a hundred dollars for those keywords for that per click and per click is not as accurate, you know, it's, yeah. it's, but if they're doing a hundred and I'm charging them $3, it, okay. You're saying, and all right. Okay. Now, um, if you want to, if you wanted to work on the retail end of things, you know, and I yeah. talked about this earlier, you know, you could be the manufacturer, you could be the distributor, yeah. you could be the rep, you could be the retailer, Okay. The the retailer gets his nose ground off all day long, every day, yeah. 24-7. Okay. And, it, and it's like groundhog day. It just starts over again tomorrow. Okay. I see now, what you're saying though. Now I mean you there are, are segments of markets that are so profitable, you have to do minimal amount of work to to get maximum output. Okay. So let's say you specialized in mesothelioma. You know, those leads are hundred plus per click and that's all you wanted to do. And you just wanted to find a few attorneys that would buy all the leads you could generate from them. And, you know, that's a different thing, okay. but if you're getting into lead gen and you're going to have a bunch of customers and you're going to try and complicate life okay. by trying to figure out what to charge them all. Okay. All right. And uh, I have one last question, but then about pricing and profit and whatnot, is it, um, and again, it kind of, uh, is there any way if I'm just uh, white labeling it and they're running their campaigns, is there any way for me to see how well they're doing or what their conversion rate is, but, or, or not, because if they're, if they have their own marketing, if the emails are, you know, they you know. should know that. Like if, if it were me again, I would not want to get in the middle of that crap. All right. I guess that goes with, with my first question. If I, Is there any chance to see how well they're doing? Like if they have a 20% conversion rate. Because and, you want to you charge know, them more? That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it's it's the, My first question is about how do I gauge how much to charge them based on pay-per-click, which, you know, you yeah. kind of said you might want to rethink that. And, yeah. and part B of that was like, is there any way to see how well they're doing? And if I'm I charging would... them 10 bucks and they're making 2,000 off, you know, or 2,000 with a new client. But personally, again, you know I would, I'm yeah, no, I get it. I totally get it. And it's, you know, there's two things driving it okay. and it's scarcity and greed. Yeah. Scarcity and greed. <laughs> to to me, right. they just don't fit into my world. Okay. And, and I know all the people that I've seen that operate from a scarcity and greed perspective, they never really do well in the long run. Okay. I understand scarcity and greed, but, but is it also like being taken advantage of and being, you know, undercharging, see, under earning see, to me, stuff. I position myself to, to be taken advantage of. Yeah. I know it. I in no way feel like I'm getting taken advantage of. Yeah. But I position myself. See, if I can let someone else think that they got the better of me. Yeah. That they, they love that. They eat that shit up. And, See, and, you know, in the background, I'm like, yeah, you think you got me? Man, I don't think so. Who's, no, you, know what, you you walk the talk, John, because like you, like you and Brady, I mean, if I understand what you're saying, uh, there's so much enthusiasm at $1.99 at per lead. How much enthusiasm would be if you said, let's charge them 10? 
you, you know you know you know what i mean yeah, that... and you know this goes back to the i call this the old bull thing you know brady came in when he when i first connected with him and we first started working together he was all like yeah let's charge out there let's go let's go you know let's go kill some shit and, and i told him about the old bull theory and he's like what's that and i'm like well the old bull and the young bull are standing on top of the the hill and they're looking down over the pasture and you got all these nice young cows down there and the young bulls like ladies just kind of close your ears for a minute but the the young bull says let's run down there and fuck one of them cows <laughs> and the old bull says no why don't we mosey down and fuck them all <laughs> okay that right. was my grandfather's favorite joke yeah. Oh my God! I can't believe I've heard it again. Thank you, Joe. Well, thank you, Red Skelton. That's a Red yeah. Skelton I number. I was like, yeah. I and, guess. and I am so apologetic if I offended anyone with that language, but that's right. the story that I can't okay. change. You know, it's history. Okay, I appreciate John, it. That's John. that's called that's that's Red Fox did that. The, the old black comedian Red Fox. <laughs> but to answer your question, Chris, what you can do. I, I had that same problem and I realized that if I'm selling to PPC advertisers, they have a click. I can say, I'm giving this to you at whatever discount you want to give them off the click. And the reason I'm giving you the discount is that, like I said, we're in beta here. We're giving you the discount. We'll lock it in for life if you report back how these leads compare to the leads you're currently using. That gives you a reason for giving the discount and a reason for them to report back to you. And that way you both have an investment in it. And, and, now, and now here, Chris just said it. He said just minutes ago that I walk the walk, right? I not only talk the talk, I walk the walk. And here's something I'm going to tell you guys that I haven't, I haven't released this yet. I don't even know if Brady knows about this yet. And it's going to affect his commission. So, <laughs> But here's the deal. When you guys get to 2,000 leads per month, I'm going to waive your platform fees. So like the for the full airliner, you're paying $297 a month for the full airliner. When you get yourself to 2,000 leads a month, I'm going to waive that. There's going to be, you'll, your fee will go down to a dollar. I have to keep it a dollar in the system to keep it alive. But you'll pay a dollar a month for access to the platform. 2,000 leads is not very much, <clears throat> but I would rather have you selling 2,000 leads and incentivize you to do it than make the platform fees. Because I know that if I can get you to 2,000 leads a month, you're just one step away from 10,000 leads a month. Now think about it. If I'm making 25 cents a lead, and I can get you to 10,000 leads a month. That's $2,500 a month you're going to be putting in my pocket. Do I care about the 297? The short answer is I do not. I do not. It's not about the platform fees here. It's about finding the people that are going to pour money into my pocket. And I'll pour money into theirs. It's not greed and it's not scarcity. It's the absolute opposite. Hey, can I tell you why that's a really good strategy? You I just know why it is. <laughs> yeah, but but from 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 my level, you've just given me a target. Yeah, because I'm I'm just like oh, there's a lot of videos. It's overwhelming. It's like uh, I gotta <clears> you know <throat> like see I'm looking at the motorhome here, but you just gave me a short term target. It's like yeah. two thousand. Are you two thousand? Nothing. You can get I mean. that, like you get that with one customer. Yeah. You've given me, you've made, you've given me the incentive to get through the setup and the stuff. Cause now I have a short-term goal of 2000, which I might've been in overwhelm land for a little bit. You know, now it's like, uh, uh, I'm get anyway, I'm just saying, John, it works for me. I'm yeah. And you know, and, and then for the, for the ones that have big goals and big aspirations, then we've got this guy. We've got the yeah, uh, you can't hard. hold it under your hold it under your face. There you go. Oh, there you go. So you guys see that? This yeah. is a gold Dying. bar. And and it replicates. Richard, you can't have it. 
It replicates a million dollar bill in the form of a gold bar. This is up for grabs for the first person to sell a million leads through the system. And Brady says he'll package it up and fly it out and hand it to you in person. <laughs> John, the thing about that, oh, unfortunately, I've been looking around. That's just a silver bar with a gold plate, unfortunately. It I was is. Hoping, actually, right. I was hoping to get a real solid gold bar because <laughs> if they get a million, I want to give them a real solid gold bar. Well, um, you can do yeah. that. I just, I have not found one. All of the, all the replicated bills, there are, there are all four ounces of silver with 24 karat gold plating. But it's more, it's not about the value of the bill. It's about the bragging rights. You know, that's, it's all about the bragging rights. It's not about the value of the thing, because I guarantee you, whoever gets that, they're never going to sell it. They're never going to take that to a pawn shop and say, what's this worth? You know, can I get, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what it's about. It's about the 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 value of the bragging rights. So I'm just about authenticity, John. I, <laughs> it's gonna be what it is. It's gonna be what it is. I'll give them the silver one for silver, yeah, like, and then when they get the like, gold one, they'll get the gold one. Silver is actually is actually a less malleable metal than gold. I'm surprised <laughs> they aren't willing to do that. But like Gwen, did you take yours to the pawn shop, or are you still holding on to it? I was about to go grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Gwen actually won the hundred thousand dollar bill from the ACT program. She moved a hundred thousand dollars worth of worth of product through the ACT program. So she was one of the first ones to do that. So she has one of those bills that's in a hundred thousand dollar denomination. But same thing, it's four ounces of silver gold plated. But it's it's a prize. Yeah. Hang on, I gotta go grab it. <laughs> it's an You're absolute really going to get prize. It too. <laughs> so it's uh, it's pretty cool pretty cool stuff and again you know that's something that you can use contests incentivizes people like crazy you know when they have a, a goal there there she is hundred thousand dollars with woodrow wilson on it awesome and it's on my desk and my goal is to get the gold one now yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but see you win something like that it is you know you look at it every day and it's like it's like a sense of accomplishment it's a it's an awesome thing to to have accomplished that when you're gonna like, need a bigger desk <laughs> it's like russell brunson you know uh he does that uh what is it the two comma club and he gives out the same thing it's like a gold record album you know, I doubt that's solid gold. That's probably just plated, just like these bars. But it's the prize, you know, it's the whole thing. And it's just it's just a cool deal. So so those are my two incentives for you guys. The first one, get to two thousand, we waive the platform fees, and then get to a million and get the gold bar and and have bragging rights amidst the community. Like one of you on here is going to get that and you're going to go nanner, nanner, nanner. <laughs> and, and I look forward to that day. So another thing I wanted to announce too, I, um, I talk about this a, a lot about negotiations to get what you want. And like, I've done this a lot in domain names. Like if you want to buy a domain name, a lot of times they'll have a, you know, an outrageous price on it or whatever. And you just sell them, you express your interest and then you walk away and then they chase you and they give you better deals. Well, I did that with traffic and conversion this year. Traffic and conversion sent me the offer to come and, you know, be an exhibitor at the TNC show. And it's in Vegas this year. And I expressed an interest. They sent me the prices. And uh, when the salesperson followed up, I said, you know, I would love to go, but that's just well outside of our budget. And uh, I said, if you, you know, if you decide you can't fill it up and you need help filling, you know, putting butts in the seats and you, you know, you figure out, you know, what you can do for me, let me know. I'm sitting on the sidelines. 
And, you know, he said, of course, oh, well, we can't do that. Our prices are our prices. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I understand. I totally get it. I just, I'm out. And uh, a couple months later, he contacted me again. And he's like, you know, would you consider a discounted price? And I'm like, well, I already told you I would. And he sent me the discounted price. And I'm like, well, that's not any better than the first one. I'm sorry, I'm out. I, I said, for me to do that, it would have to be a substantial discount for me to be able to justify that. Well, I got an email this morning and uh, their $13,000 booth price. He said, I had a cancellation last minute. I can get you in for five grand. And I'm like, sold. So I've got the booth. We're going to Las Vegas for the trafficking convention in January. And uh, we'll be featuring Acquisition Air. So I got to tell you, as well as Acquisition Air sold to my list, I think it's going to sell like freaking hotcakes in that auditorium. So Brady gets to go to Vegas and uh, we'll see. We'll see his sales skills at that point. We'll see how much money he can pull out of the, not the casinos, but <laughs> I bet you he pulls more out of the, out of the trade show hall than the casinos. <laughs> Stay away from casinos. They get me in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we're going to just chain you in the, in the display hall. <laughs> So, but very cool. But I mean, otherwise I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity, but, or I, you know, I could have, I could have paid 13 grand for it, but uh, you know, to me, it wasn't, it wasn't worth that. It What's was, the dates, John? It was worth five. <laughs> the, the dates on that, that it's is. the 9th through the 12th, I believe. Yeah. yeah 9th through the it's 11th. A, so it's, I'm sorry, 11th. Yeah. Uh, CES is going on at the same time in Vegas. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so they're happening concurrent on, on top of each other. Oh, awesome. Uh, so I believe I shall be in Vegas. I would not object if you need someone else to help sell your thing. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna I, I know I get a certain amount of uh a certain amount of passes for people for the booth. So I'll uh, I don't know how many that is, but uh I'll see I, I'll see what I can come up with. Well, if you John. have a pass, I will take it and I will sell the shadow your stuff. And I know a few people who are going to be there. Oh, I'll okay. take a pass I'll, too. I'll take it. We we can drive there on my pusher. John, John, I'll 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 join in the volunteer to cover the booth when you need you know cover whatever. All right. Just talk. Let me let me see how many passes I can come up with. I said it oh. first, but I I because I'm, I I'm going to be got... CES anyway. So Wait a minute, John, what's the price on that uh, on that pass? The extra, the extra pass you got? Uh, if you if someone was paying cash for that pass, I'm just saying. Oh. It's, uh, TNC, I, I I think it's about a thousand bucks. Whoa! So no, what you're saying is, if I buy like one of those for a thousand dollars and take it away from everybody, you only have to pay four grand for that table. <laughs> exactly. I'm just helping you make money, John. <laughs> but yeah, I think, and I don't, I don't know for sure, but I think I think it's about a thousand bucks to go to the traffic and conversion now. I know it was uh, it was more than I was prepared to spend, so I wasn't even going to go this year. <laughs> it is two k minimum. Oh, two thousand. Yeah, yeah, minimum. There you go. So, so I'm I'm sure that I get at least three passes. So I just got a five thousand dollar booth with three passes worth two grand each. <laughs> <laughs> So not a bad deal, right? All right, Gwen, go ahead. You got your hand up there. I got to unmute myself again. Um, I'm looking at SynGrid again, and it looks like um, we need to go for the highest level of their offers. Is that correct? Because we need the, the um, oh, I got to pull them up again. The um. I, I don't know which what level you, know? you need, but I, I know you need the one with the API key. Okay, that's what I was looking at. The API key, is there a $60 a month level? Yeah, okay. Gwen, you need that one. That yeah, she you needs that one because I have a hookup already. Yeah, I got a hookup. That's the one you need or else she won't be able to do it. Okay. It'll give you your own um, 
email sending wise with that they've included your own separate ip which is nice for for sending as well so that's cool awesome okay so i was looking at that and then i'm looking to put this together as a um I've got it rebranded already kind of idea. And I'm looking for um, an URL for it. And I'm looking, I wanted, um, I'm going to do villa, like a resort villa in the concierge type of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm looking at a URL and I, I was hoping for villa.ai and that one's already taken. But I can go villa.live. Would that be appropriate? because it's live leads but it's like yeah i personally i would rather have a dot com a dot com okay because if you get one of the funky endings and you do any kind of advertising they're all going to go to the dot com and you're going to be pushing them to someone else's site oh so, okay like like when i did acquisition air i did that particular one because i could buy the dot com for it right so I got okay. acquisition air.com it wasn't my preferred one. It was, you know, it works. It worked perfectly. Uh -huh. but it wasn't, it wasn't like my first one. Like my first one was lead air. Ah, okay. Lead air was my original thought and I couldn't get lead air.com. It was already taken. So I'm like, all right. That's uh, I know, John, I went in, if you remember, I went in and bought the simple, easy leads because it relates to my brand. And yeah. I mean, and yeah. I was, was blown away that I got a freaking sale this week from it. Like someone, I'm like, I don't even know who the person is, but they yeah. found it because I went and bought it and put the affiliate link to it immediately. Yeah. I saw that sale come through and I'm like, damn, Tim's, Tim's promoting our offer. It didn't promote. Tim doesn't know how that came, <laughs> but he's going to take it. And that's yeah, why yeah. you get a .com lead, get something related to your business that also relates to the product being sold. Yeah. I can do like villaapp.com. That might work. So anyways, that's kind of where what I'm at. About, what about Villa phrase. Leads? Villa Leads. Let me go. Let me look real quick. Like I did acquisition because it's all about client acquisition. But leads, anything, anything that relates to what they want, like, like client acquisition is like one of the highest things that people want. So I, I kind of based it around there. And since I was doing the airliner theme, acquisition air was kind of mm -hmm. the way I pieced that together in my head. And then I had the AI convince me I had done the right thing. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I did use the AI on the wording. I didn't ask him about if it was the right the right way to go i was just rustin came up with villa because it was vision interface leads acquisition yeah and it's like ah, that works okay it's thinking it's not giving it to me but the you know you you could also like i could instead of the airliner i could have also done um uh, I was thinking like a limo service, like shuttling your ideal customer right to your front door. Uh huh. So that was that was another thing I was kind of kicking around. But then I realized, hey, I'm sitting on a jumbo jet here. This is the ultimate machine to move people to their ideal destinations. <laughs> so that that's how that's how my little pea brain pieced that together and came yeah. up with that idea. I think it's cool. I'd run with that one too. I actually get some of my best marketing ideas on either in airports or on airliners for some reason. Like I, I actually put a webinar together sitting in an airport, looking at the airplane, sitting there on the runway. And uh, it was the webinar that I did about equating how a, how an, a pilot, can fly that plane without even thinking about it and how marketing is the same way. A marketer has all these layered things over years that gets them to that experience level where they can just jump in the cockpit and not think about it and create a marketing campaign that works. So it's like I was relating it to the ad agencies of how, how good those the ad specialists are <clears throat> and how if you want to get to that point, you have to layer on all that experience over the years. 
but I came up with that whole campaign just sitting there in an airport looking at an airplane. <laughs> so something about airplanes and airports make my mind work. <laughs> All right. Any anybody else here? All right, Sue, go ahead. Yeah, actually, I'm trying to change the number of leads per day in Acquisition Air. And uh, I'm trying to edit the campaign, but I don't know exactly where to go because I don't see that option to change the number of leads per day. Okay, that's in the, Brady, that's the campaign edit, correct? I went, I went to campaign edit. and. Uh, oh, I guess he's not on here anymore. Yeah, I'm on here. Oh, there you are. Um, I'm I'm texting or email or direct messaging Sue. Um, it's in the it's in the campaign setup video as well, but it's in the toolbar where the money sign is. That's how you change your leads per day, depending on your client or an agent. Same place. Toolbar where the money sign is. You may have to scroll over if your screen's not big enough. It's on your campaign toolbar with all the icons for the Google Sheets, the play, the pause, the stop button. It's all the way to the right. You can yeah. also watch the video. If you go in and watch the video, he walks you through that step yeah. by step. I sent her I sent her over the link. Okay, cool. So that's you with, with my picture. I wondered who that was. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's, uh, that's going to be on all my Zoom meetings now. So just to keep it in front of people. <laughs> so Brady's the who wants it guy. <laughs> I'm counting on you, Chris. Bald guys got to stick together, man. <laughs> I'm real sorry. I just don't see the money sign, but anyway, I'll figure it out. I just don't see the money sign. I'm on the edit campaign. Send, uh, send a support ticket in and maybe do a loom recording or something, and one of us can help okay. you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> maybe maybe my name should be, uh, uh, my site should be uh, Bald Guys Rule. Yeah. Or <laughs> Bald Guys Deliver. Bald Guys <laughs> are us. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole movement. You guys could form a, a movement. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, see, I can tell that Richard's done some things right in his life. He's still got his hair. <laughs> I'm hoping hoping to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> the big problem was when my... I, I noticed that that was probably not going to be an issue because when my grandfather... He was always saying, but in morning when he shaved, he also had to shave his nose and his ears because otherwise he'd get bushes. So yeah, yeah, I don't have that problem, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Jay, I don't know what you have on your head there, but it looks interesting. <laughs> it's, it's a my, man uh, bun. A man bun man or bun. tiara. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> You guys were talking about you guys were talking about hair and suddenly mine appeared. King that was awesome. from nowhere. King J. <laughs> I can't hear it's not butter. It's a hair cano. Just, just wanted to make sure you know it didn't go I still, unnoticed. I still have most of my hair. It's in a bag in my uh, desk drawer. <clears throat> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I uh, I regularly go to the barber because when I'm total wash and wear. I don't do anything with my hair. And when it starts sticking out, it's time to get cut off. <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely not, not a hair worshiper. <laughs> if it goes, no problem. <laughs> yeah. We'll just buy more. Buy more. Yeah. <laughs> buy yeah. more hair. Yeah. Shampoo, right. turtle wax, whatever you pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh classic john michael uh matson had a question that might be good just to explain just to make sure there's no confusion it's back in the chat but he said it seems that a full airliner level you could offer both lead generation so lead sales to certain clients and then white label the software for other clients would that be a fair assessment i just want to make sure we're clear that if you're reselling the white label if somebody wants to get access to acquisition air then they're not going to get you know they're not going to make commission on the leads. They're basically going to get an affiliate commission, but they can sign on agencies um, that that can have as many clients and that sort of thing um, as the white label. 
and you know letting them do all the marketing like you were talking about earlier so just want to make sure there's no confusion there okay yeah yeah so there there is you have the ability to promote acquisition air as an affiliate but there there's no you get the affiliate fees on the platform only not on the not on the leads because you're not marking the leads up we're selling the leads wholesale and there's no real commissions on the leads part of it so the only way that you can make money on the leads is if you're either the 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 private the private plane is really made for you to to buy leads for yourself not to say that you couldn't sell them to somebody but there's no billing system involved it's just it would all be done by hand if you're going to sell them to someone else you're going to want at least the corporate jet because it's got the billing involved it's it's a streamlined process for you to be able to sell leads to other people now if you want to show it like it's your own and you're a software company, a SaaS software, and you want to allow people to create accounts and run their own campaigns and all that under your branding, that would be the, the corporate or the, uh, the full airliner rather. So hopefully that makes sense because in the, in, in the full airliner, you can have people create accounts. You can set actually a platform fee, just like we do. And you can set the lead fees for them. So you can decide whether you want to charge them access to the platform, you know, on a weekly basis, or if you want to, you know, just remove the platform fees and just let them buy the leads. So totally up to you. So that's, that, that's on which one? That's on the full airliner. So you brand it as your own brand, but it has all the billing and everything built right into it. So your customers could literally come, they could sign up for their own accounts. And in the software, you set the billing. So you set whether there's a platform fee, a setup fee, a lead fee, you set all of that. So and you could still create, you could still create a platform. Uh, like Brady was talking about, you could still create a platform for an individual company and run it yourself if you wanted to. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You can run, you can set yourself up as a client inside either one, e either the, the, the full airliner or the corporate jet, you could always set yourself up as a client if you want to buy leads for yourself. And then obviously you set your leads at the default price of 199. So you're not paying, <laughs> you don't want to pay too much for your own leads. Very cool. Um, going circling back a little bit uh, to what you guys were talking about earlier with the the price per leads, when there's such a disparity, uh, as uh, was it Chris that was talking about it? There's such yeah, a disparity yeah. in the in the value of leads, yeah, yeah. Because we're you I'm could same. You could technically set up several different levels of leads. Like you could have basic leads and you could, you could list, you know, all the niches that are provided in there. And then you could have premium leads, like, you know, maybe for mortgage and solar and roofing and, you know, who knows what else. And then high, you could have ultimate leads. You could have mm. ultimate leads for like just the, you know, the, the super high hitters, like the mesothelioma and, you know, the, the niches that people are paying hundreds of dollars of leads. You could do that. I mean, there's, I wasn't really, I was trying to simplify Chris's life by giving him a, a, you know, what I think is a better, a better solution, but you could absolutely do that. Yeah. When you do that kind of stuff though, you are adding more complexity to your life and to your business. Yeah. And whoever's going to run this business for you, they would have to have a higher skill <laughs> level to, to do that. Right. You know, if you want to try and make something that's a true freedom business you can walk away from, you got to simplify the shit out of it. It literally has yeah. to be like McDonald's where everything's systematized and, you know, you take the burger and you flip it every 30 seconds and, you know, right. done. What, what, what goes on in my mind is that, you know, let's say that I'm buying, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say I'm buying leads for a hundred and you come along and say, Hey, I got $2 leads. It's the first thing I'm going to think. Well, it's how you position it. 
you wouldn't. Yeah, the too good to be the too good to be true is clearly too good to be true is clearly part of it. But you have to understand is that because this is a completely new thing, you have to completely for a moment set aside everything that exists up to this point and realize that the cost per click is not based on the value of the particular word. It's an auction. It's whatever idiot out there will pay that much for that particular word because he thinks he can sell more products than that lead cost. So all of that is out of what we're doing here. We are doing something that quite literally, we've been, I've been doing direct mail since postage stamps were 20 cents. You know, so this lead has not existed before anywhere unless you go to some place that's doing pre-qualified leads and you're gonna pay between 150 to $300 per qualified lead that we are now delivering for whatever price you wanna charge. Right. So, so the, so Jay, the challenge, the challenge, challenge behind that, you got the challenge second. behind hold that on, is the education hold component. Hold on a sec, let me, let me kind of help you position this because this is a positioning thing. So yeah. instead of saying, you know, I've got $2 leads when the guy's paying a hundred, the way I would position it is we have a lead generation system that we're selling the leads wholesale. This thing will generate leads in any niche, including the high dollar ones. So mm -hmm. you're positioning it as though you're, you're explaining why. You always have to explain why. And you're also positioning yourself to be put into a position where they feel like they can take advantage of you. And in that case, they won't even think about it. They'll just buy it and hope you don't figure out that they're taking advantage of you. Hmm. And in that I mean, case, just... those guys are probably, hmm. they're probably not just serving that high dollar niche. They're probably serving a whole bunch and they're going to wind up buying a shitload of leads from you anyway. Yeah. I'm in that side, just to put it frankly, they're hoes. So because uh, of the way they do their deals on it, and like for roofing, for example, the more leads at lower cost, the more they can actually sell it to the roofers. So if they're spending like in one particular area that's uh, popular, let's say they're doing Atlanta, roofing leads in Atlanta are, are really expensive <laughs> if you haven't if you haven't run leads there. So yeah. if you're selling them for like three fifty, and they have like fifteen clients around that area, and they can get those leads cheaper from you, they'll just buy thousands of leads for you. Because all they do is buy and waste in their hose. So anywhere it is the cheapest lead is where they're going to buy. You're talking about lead companies that are selling leads to roofers in Atlanta. Yeah, right? lead companies. Lead companies will buy the leads yeah. from you because they have to spend. Like for them to do it, what a lot of them, what some of them do is they have a nice credit card. They get a credit card with whatever is on it. And they use that on the different ad platforms like Facebook and um Google to generate these leads for this area because they're going to resell mm. the leads to maybe 15 different roofing companies, the same lead. That's how it works. Gotcha. Gotcha. gotcha so gotcha. if you sell it them 350, who cares? Because literally if they find you're an okay lead source, you're already cheap compared to what they're doing and you're an okay lead source, they'll just buy thousands upon thousands of dollars of leads from you because they will not care. Yeah. Okay. So, it, and it's, it's back to the whole thing of now you become the manufacturer, you find a handful of distributors that have, those distributors have all the reps, those reps have all the retail stores, and they just sell the shit out of your stuff. And you've got one person to deal with instead of a whole shitload of pains in your ass. <laughs> so the further gotcha. up you can climb the ladder, the closer you'll be to a, an automated freedom lifestyle. All right, cool. Thanks. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it's back to, it is truly back to the, the, the scarcity and greed thing of going after, you know, just trying to get the big dollar thing. It's, it, you might get that you might sell, you might sell, you know, you're not going to sell a lot of leads because there probably won't be that many leads to sell in that niche, but you'll get a bunch for each one. But it, it'll be very, it'll handicap the hell out of you for growth. Hmm. So the, right, the, cool. the growth is always in volume. 
and you want to, you know, and this is me really, I'm speaking for myself here. I always want to position myself as high up the ladder as possible so I can do the biggest amount of volume with the least amount of effort and let all the others make the money along the way. I get a little piece of all of it for a minimal effort. Cool. That's the way you create a freedom lifestyle. That's how you're going to go and play on your boat and, you know, hook up wireless internet through Starlink and connect when you need to. <laughs> yeah, I needed it today. My Our internet went down. It was not fun. <laughs> But, you know, you guys, you guys see me over the last few months. I haven't been spending near as much time on the boat. I've been in here kind of uh, going back to work because I, I said I was going to lead by example. And and I will I will put my nose to the grindstone and I'll work really hard for a short amount of time as a means to an end. So once this is all up and functioning and in place and i've got the team in there to do the support and all that it's going to require very little of my effort on this my effort will come down to making relationships with promoters setting up trade shows that kind of stuff and then i'm back to my position of the lifestyle that i like so I don't mind coming in and giving that up for a short amount of time to work really hard to as a means to an end. But I'm not doing that every day for the rest of my life. I ain't happening. <laughs> Very cool. All right, cool. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we wrap up this week? I think I am going to probably do one more, one more email out as far as our closing out our black friday deal but i might wait till next week for that i'm gonna let let brady's voice chill down and settle everybody in so far i think i've created enough shit storm for one week <laughs> hey it's captain shit storm <laughs> i do Who love that nickname for you i do love that ability I've always <laughs> loved to be able to create a shit storm. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> hey, John, uh, this is Lily. Can I ask you a yeah. quick question? Sure, go ahead. Um, so this has been a great uh, webinar as usual, and I am um somewhat envious of you know everyone because everyone sounds like they're ready to take the bull by the <laughs> horn here and um i after speaking with lorenzo last week um decided that it was a little uh, too soon perhaps for me to jump on board because i really need help with um my marketing um email system right yeah. just my automations and they're not fully prepared prepared yet you know to um yeah. provide that service and i didn't know what it like it was going to cost and what it was going to look like and so i didn't want to sit around and um collect fees you know on this sure uh, on this service until i was ready to jump on it full full blown um, is that, is that kind of, am I on the right track there? You think, yeah, or yeah, no, no, you're, you're fine. You're right where you need to be. You, you know, you, you definitely need to address systems. Lorenzo, I don't know when he's going to be up and running up and functional. I'm going to have a better idea tomorrow because I've got a meeting with him to talk tomorrow about that. I did set up a, a old friend of mine. His name's Ken Krell. He's, He's an old, old time marketer. He saw the acquisition error. I don't know. Somebody told him about it and he contacted me. He's like, oh my God. He goes, what are you doing now? And he was so impressed with it that he wants to be involved. And he does, uh, he works a lot with, uh, with a lot of companies setting up their marketing campaigns and things. And he's in a position to automate a system to, to, help people out with us so i've also got him putting a proposal together for anybody that needs help so i'll have both ken and lorenzo both side by side in a very short time frame here to help anybody that actually wants to 
just buy the leads and just step out of the way and let somebody that knows what they're doing market it for them. So that's that's coming as quick as I can make it happen. <laughs> I, uh, I spoke with Ken last night, and uh, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Um, had about a 30-minute conversation with Ken. Sounds like a great guy and absolutely knows his stuff. So um, should be a, a good partnership in either direction you go. Yeah, and if we if we plug both of them, um, I've got several other guys I could reach out to that are on the same the same realm. So I, I don't think we'll have a problem scaling and and being able to handle everybody. So, Mr. Chris, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely, have... Lily. One quick point of clarification. Um, I I know uh you all talk about you know in the future we'll have this feature and that feature and whatnot, but just to be clear. This system's ready to go now, though, right? Oh the, yeah, it's fully okay. fully functioning as it is. So we're no I longer. Think in... There's I don't think there's anything in it right now that's not working one hundred percent. Okay, so it's not in beta anymore. Oh, it's actually... it'll in, be in beta for the rest of my life. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, and so the real uh, so the path is to go through the training and the videos that are up. Yes. And yeah. to go into go into implementation to uh, to implement it and to uh, have the resources uh, to uh, get out there and sell. And if we run into any questions about the setup or stuff like that, just open a support ticket and uh, and get clarification that way. Or next week, ask a question or two about specifically about something to like. But we're we're the sky's the limit right now, right? We're good sky's, to go. Okay, sky's the limit. You are good to go. The only thing that that is is I'm not going to say it's not complete because the system is is complete at this point, but there will be more bells and whistles added to it as we go. So, so we're cleared for takeoff. Then is that you are cleared for takeoff? You have you have green lights all the way down the runway. You are nice. your turn. You're you are up. All right. <laughs> we're going to say throttle up your engines and. Uh, get up to 100 miles an hour speed on the runway and pull back on the yoke. All right. I will say, Chris, uh, appreciate you saying that because um, we're trying to make sure that we squeeze all of the traffic to the support site so we can start to build out our FAQ section. And uh, if we have it in three or four separate email inboxes, it's really hard to do that. So if you guys, even if you've communicated with me in the past, you know, if you want to send me an email and tell me, hey, how are you doing today? But anything relating to acquisition error, uh, please don't send me an, an email like that. I'm just joking. But uh, <laughs> um, anything in acquisition error, please fill out a support ticket. Um, I wouldn't fill out a support ticket until you've watched the videos. You might get tired of hearing my voice. I'm not a professional videographer or anything like that. Um, there's probably some videos that we need. Uh, if you feel that way, put it in the support. Or maybe send me a, a direct message and say, hey, I think this would be a really good video. I'm open to that. We're not perfect. We're, we're still working on some things. But we want to direct all the traffic to the support tickets. That way we can we can all hone in on just one inbox and then have it for an FAQ section, which not only helps us, it also helps you if you're a white label and you're looking for other uh, advice on setting up a help center down the road for your business as well. Yeah, one one other thing I want to add on top of that too, in the support system, in the help desk, like if you put in a ticket and Brady answers your ticket, you do not have to go in and say thank you. you because what that does is that opens a new ticket. So now someone else has to address that ticket. So let's leave the support as a thankless job. <laughs> And, and just, <laughs> but seriously you know you don't need to thank us in there if we've solved your thing you're good to go we're good if you if we didn't and you still have an issue then absolutely respond to the ticket because it will just it'll create a new ticket and it'll get addressed you know as soon as possible so but Could we do a round of applause for brady as a way to say thank you now and for our uh, future I, I think that's a phenomenal idea and <clears throat> and uh and Bree's right in his shadow too so she, she and, you yes know, and Bree and those you, the three those two great. were we should be very thankful for this week from Thanksgiving those are those are the two we're thankful for the most this week 
So I have one more question for you, John. Okay, go ahead. I noticed that, uh, so I'm building uh, my Carter site for uh, Funnel Coach Chris uh, to use to promote this product and whatnot and to advertise it, borrowing some of your copy and whatnot. Uh, are there, um, I noticed that in the uh, integrations in Kartra, there is SendGrid, you know, yes. in there. My mm -hmm. question is, are there any, it, as I'm building out a Kartra site to advertise this, are there any, are these two separate, I mean, Kartra is a separate thing from um, uh, from Acquisition Air. Acquisition Air has yes. got the billing and it's got the autoresponder built in and it's got your your and Brady's backbone in it. So is there any integration I should be thinking about when building a Kartra site other than just as a Kartra as a marketing tool? No, not in, not in this aspect. Okay. And another thing, like, while we're on the subject of Kartra, I found out that they did a Kartra upgrade that is, it was so needed. I have squealed about this for the last two and a half years and they finally did it and they didn't tell me. I just found it yesterday. It's when somebody puts in a wrong email or their email bounces and you have to replace the email and all that. Before, you would have to go through a system of getting it whitelisted, which was a pain in the ass. You'd have to contact their support. They'd have to whitelist it and then get back to you. And it took several days in almost every case. So now, if you go in and you see that there's a red dot on your, on your prospect, and it, you roll over the red dot, and it'll tell you why they're not able to email It'll say like hard bounce or blacklist or or whatever. Usually it's because your your prospect put the wrong email in. Like we had several people over the course of the launch that misspelled their email and they're like, well, we didn't get the the onboarding emails. You go in and you find the email was wrong. Well, of course you didn't. You put the wrong email address in. And before you would have to go through this whole process. Well, now what you can do is you can just update their email, save it, and then go back. It'll still have the red dot on it. So it'll be like blocked, blacklisted, but you can have a refresh. Now, when you roll over it, there's a, a refresh button and it'll recheck it and activate it. Now you can send email to them from the system. So I was so happy to see that. That was just such a good thing to have. <laughs> <laughs> and the only way to refresh their email or sorry to uh to replace their email with the correct one is you have to wait until they contact you and say hey where's my where's my thing or where's my whatever and that's i mean there's no way to contact them if you have an erroneous email there's no way to contact them okay well here's here's what i've seen in the past like i do that periodically i'll go through Kartra and just see whose emails are bad and if it, you know, if, if it's somebody I don't know or whatever, I'll just remove it out just so I can keep my list clean. But it, sometimes I'll look and like they misspelled Gmail. Like, you know, they put GM instead of AIIA, you know, or, okay. or they put gmail.co. They didn't put the com. So I can go in and I can correct it for them. And then now they're in my system. Now I can communicate with them and they can receive my marketing emails and, and such. But it's really bad when it's actually a customer and somebody purchased your product and they don't get the, you know, the onboarding emails. That's a bad thing. So it comes down to, you know, come on, people, put your check your emails before you hit <laughs> checkout. <laughs> But that I was really happy to see that because that made it super simple to update the emails and uh, and fix that inside the Kartra system. So big plus for Kartra on that one. All right. Well, anything else? We get you all dialed in. All right. Awesome, Paul. You had a question. Yes, I was wondering if I could ask you a private question after this. I have to write after this about crypto. Okay, sure. Okay. I'll uh, once I close out, I'll uh, I'll open it back up and you hop back in. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, sure. All right, guys, we will go ahead and wrap up for today.
again, I held your attention for two hours. That never ceases to amaze me. I can talk for that long. <laughs> but uh, anyway, stuff, thanks, happy, John. Happy, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Have a great week. And uh, keep just because Black Friday is over does not mean your sales opportunities are over. There's a special day, 365 days a year. Every one of them is reason to sell something. So <laughs> don't let don't let the magic stop just because Black Friday is over. All right, guys, have a but great the week. second Black Friday coming Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Have a great week and we'll see you all next week. Oh, sure. It's going ashore. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. <laughs>